Yes, it does. Okay, that's a bad example. Uh, let's let's move on. Huh. Okay, that might actually be a worse example. Okay, so I know that not everything in nature is uh, random. There is actually a lot of structure and order uh, inside of nature. But that doesn't mean we can't still use the particle system to achieve some of these effects, right? Of course it doesn't. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be taking you through the creation of uh, both this corn on the cob and this cactus right here. Uh, and uh, show you how to how to set up your particle system to allow for a uh, a lot of uniformity and structure. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so we'll start off with a brand new empty blender scene as we usually do. I've got a couple uh, mesh lights set up already, um, you know, just so we don't have to worry about doing that later on. And uh, really quickly, uh, if you notice down here on my little screencast keys, this shift plus in between mouse move that keeps popping up. Uh, for some reason when I upgraded to Blender uh, 2.65 it started showing that. Um, basically all that means is that I happen to be hitting shift while I'm moving the mouse, um, which I don't actually know why it needs you know to tell you that, but if you see this um, just disregard it and I'll see if I can't figure out why it's doing that later. Okay. Uh, back to corn and the cob. Okay. So, uh, since we're using the particle system, we're going to need two key components for both the corn on the cob and the cactus. And that is, we need a particle to use, and we need a particle emitter to then emit said particle. So, uh, first things first, let's go ahead and just create a corn kernel particle. Particle? Yeah, one of those. So I'm going to hit Shift A to add in a cube. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, and I'm going to select this back face here, or just these four vertices, however you want to do it. I'm going to hit S to scale, Z to lock that scaling to the Z axis, scale it down just a little bit. Do the same thing along the X axis, S and then X, scale it down just a little bit, something like that. I'm going to hit A to deselect those, and then A again to select everything. And uh, I'm going to hit uh, S to scale, and then Z to scale it along the Z axis just a little, something like this. We'll be fine for now. So I'm going to tab to leave edit mode. I'm going to hit control 2 to add a subsurf modifier with two subdivision levels. There we go. And that will be fine for our kernel of corn almost. Uh, one thing we need to pay attention to, uh, since we're going to be using this as a particle, uh, we need to pay attention to a few different things. One is, if I go hit 7 to go into my top view here, one is this little yellow dot right here. And uh, this is our object's origin point. Now, what this, uh, what the origin point is, is basically it's not necessarily the center point of the object, although at the, you know, by default it sort of is. Um, but it's more the, uh, well, I guess I, it'd be easier just to show you. Let's say, uh, let's say I moved this origin point, which we can do very easily by tabbing into edit mode. And if we have everything selected and start moving it around, you can see that uh, we can move this but the origin point stays right here so let's just move it over here just you know for now now uh, let's say we want to rotate this uh, corn kernel you know 90 degrees well we select it we hit R to rotate and well look at that it's rotating around this origin point so this kind of becomes the the point that everything happens from uh, so if we were to scale it you can see it's scaling from that point which uh, sometimes can be very handy um, sometimes not. Uh, so, you know, keeping an eye on that little origin point can uh, maybe save you some headaches down the road. But, since we're going to be using it as a particle, this actually becomes very important for uh, one reason, and that is because if you can imagine a hair growing out of the top of your head, um, or, you know, if, if you're bald, I apologize, I'm, I'm not trying to be insensitive towards people that don't have hair, um, but if you can imagine hair growing out of somebody else's head, it would help for this particular illustration. All right, so uh, you've got the hair. This origin point you could be considered the root of that hair where it's coming out of your head. So in the uh, example of our corn kernel here, this origin point is going to be where it's growing out of the corn cob that we'll be making, uh, if that makes sense. So what we want to do, we'll tap back into edit mode here, and uh, we'll hit G to grab this thing, and we'll just kind of put it you know, down around here, because we want this to sort of be where it's you know, kind of growing from. Uh, so there we go. 
So now that's good. Now the other thing we need to pay attention to is the the orientation of our object itself um, because of the, the way the particle system handles the particles. Uh, this needs to be aligned a certain way along the certain axes in order to um, be uh, uh, done correctly. Uh, at least to save some hassle. Now the way that I've found that works that I like to use is uh, if I hit 7 to go into top view mode uh, while in top view mode, if I imagine, uh, you know, up on the screen being the top of the object, down on the screen being the bottom of the object, and uh, looking at it, you know, at its front, this is the way I like to set it up. You know, if uh, if for example we had this, you know, let's say rotated like something like this, um, even if we had the origin point set up in the right spot, it's you know the orientation of the object is all goofy and it will not grow correctly. So this is just a, the way that I found to uh, that I use is is this orientation to where I'm looking if I'm in top view mode, I'm looking at the front of the object with the top of the object towards the top of the screen, the bottom of the object towards the bottom of the screen. Um, that just saves me a lot of headaches down the road, which I've had many of using the particle system. Okay, enough of that. Uh, we got our corn kernel created origin point in the right place and orient it the right way. So, uh, since it's, you know, good to go, first off I'm just going to add a smooth shader to it, just so it, you know, isn't quite so blocky. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit M and move it to another layer, just so it's out of our way for right now. Okay, so now we need an emitter object. Now for this, you know, it's a, uh, it's a corn on the cob. We have the corn, now we need the cob. So I'm just going to hit Shift A, going to add in a cylinder, and just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep the uh, the vertices around the cylinder at 20, and I'm also going to change the cap fill type to nothing, just so it's a hollow cylinder, something like that. Okay, uh, I'm going to hit 1 to go into front view mode, uh, hit G, and just kind of grab this, uh, hit Z to move it up along the Z axis just so it's up off the grid floor a little bit. It's a little easier to see what we're doing. All right. So uh, so this this is, you know, this is a good starting point. And if, if we were doing just a random distribution of corn kernels on this object, this would be as far as we really need to take the, the emitter itself. Um, you know, we could add the particle system, set it to randomly distribute all over this thing, and we'd have little lumpy corn kernels popping up all over at random. But since that is not what we want to do, we need to do a few more things to get this set up. First off, I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, um, and Z to toggle wireframe here, just so I can kind of see what I'm doing a little better. Uh, first off, since this is going to be the corn cob, we don't want it to be quite so thick, um, you know, unless you really want a really fat corn, which I guess is up to you. But for me, I'm I'm not going to have it be quite so thick around. So I'm going to select this uh, top. By, by the way, I hit B to bring up that box select tool. And you can just click and drag around what you want to select. Uh, so with this top one selected, I'm going to hit G and then Z. Just pull it up along the Z axis. Something like that. Okay. Now, uh, the way we're going to be doing this, uh, setting up the particle system, in fact, you know what, I'm just going to show you so it makes a little bit more sense rather than trying to explain it and then do it anyway. So, uh, with that being said, we'll take time to leave edit mode and we'll go up to our particles tab up here and we'll hit this little plus sign to add in a new particle system. And we're going to change this from emitter to hair, even though we're not actually going to be making a hairy corn cob, um, unless of course that's what you particularly want to make, in which case, you know, knock yourself out. Uh, but uh, we're going to be using the hair system, but rather than um, rendering out hair, we're going to be telling it to use that corn kernel object that we selected, or we created earlier. Now, the first thing that you can see here is, you know, by default, we have these hairs growing out of all the different faces um, at a very, very randomly distributed uh, way, which is, you know, is handy if you want a very random look, but since we don't, we need to make a few more adjustments on our particle settings over here. Uh, the first thing we need to do is click on this advanced tab, which as you can see gives us a few more options and changes a few of these settings around um, to give us a little bit more control over, you know, the particle system as a whole. And the first thing we're going to do is change this from the, the uh, mit from option from faces to verts. And now you can see, uh, rather than emitting from just the faces in general, it's now only emitting from vertices on the object, which instantly gives us a lot of uniformity in structure because, you know, normally, especially on something, you know, that's just a very basic, basic shape, the, uh, 
the vertices are very uniform and structured in of themselves. So this is, you know, this is basically what we're going to be doing is um, setting this up so that we have, you know, the vertices where we want them so that our corn grows the way we want them to grow. And uh, since we're uh, at pretty much at that phase, let's go ahead and change this from rendering hair particles to rendering out the uh, the corn. So if we scroll down our uh, particle system settings here, we go down to this render tab. We can change this from path to object. And now we can tell it to use this cube that we created our corn kernel from. And there we go. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, those are rotated incorrectly. Uh, I thought you went through this whole big spiel, so this wouldn't happen. Well, I'm not done yet. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is click this rotation tab here so that we can have access to these. Uh, and I'm going to switch this um, the uh, orientation here from velocity hair to normal. And now we have the corn kernels growing out uh, how they should. Uh, the first problem we have, though, is that they're a little too small. Um, if you if you ever see or look at an actual corn on the cob, the kernels are pretty cramped in there. They're uh, they're pretty pretty snug. So we need to adjust that uh, before we go any farther because we need to have our corn about the right size so that we can start adjusting the the rest of the rows on this uh, this cob right here. So uh, to do that on our on our uh, particle system settings here, we'll go to the physics tab, which is right below the rotation tab. And we'll just adjust the size of the particle, which does exactly what you would expect. It makes it bigger, it makes it smaller. Uh, so we want it to be, again, pretty snug looking, you know, pretty cramped. Um, and something like that will work. Okay. So now that we've got these figured out, we need to fill in the rest of this uh, cob here. Now since we set it to emit from the verts, uh, the way we're going to do that is by actually adding in more vertices here. But before we do that, I just noticed one thing that's going to throw us off. Uh, first off, let me let me give you a quick tip. Uh, when doing something like this, it's very handy to, um, especially when adding a little subtle variations to size and other things like that, to make sure that the number of particles that are um, growing from your uh, emitter are the same number of vertices in that object. Like, for example, if we were to tab into edit mode, um, we can see up here on the right that this shows us that at the moment we have 40 out of 40 vertices selected. Uh, if we were to deselect everything up here, we'd have 0 out of 40 selected. But in, most importantly, we now know that we have 40 vertices in this object. Well, if we look at our particle settings, we currently are growing 1,000 kernels of corn out of 40 vertices, which is not really necessary. So let's just change that down to 40 for the sake of this. And you'll notice uh, we lost a couple here. Uh, you know, something, something's happened. Well, the reason for that is this random option is selected. So it is growing them out of these vertices, but it's doing it randomly. So some of them have none, some of them have two or even three. So if we uncheck that, now you can see every vertice now has a particle, and that's what we want. Okay, so that's just a quick tip for, uh, uh, for getting that set up. Let's save real quick. Okay, so uh, let's let's add in some more vertices here. Now the easiest way to do this is to just add in a whole bunch of edge loops up and down this thing. So to do that we'll hit control R, we'll just scroll up a bunch of times till we have a whole bunch of edge loops something like this. And you may notice that we don't actually, you know, it didn't add any particles to it. And that's because we need to tab out of edit mode to sort of refresh the particle system. Which if we can do, okay, now you can see it's added corn kernels all over the thing. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, goofy looking. In fact, it's got kind of this weird little uh, spiral pattern going on a little bit here. So, uh, and that's because, you know, we only have 40 uh, corn particles now growing out of 360 vertices. So let's adjust that really quick. Adjust that to 360. Okay, there we go. And uh, this actually doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, one, if, if the spacing between the rows is a little bit off, you know, like let's say, um, for example, whoops, what am I doing? Oh, I guess I should select something before I try to scale it. Lesson learned, folks. Lesson learned. So let's say this was much taller, okay? And you can see that, you know, the the rows are, you know, that that's not how corn looks. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, you know, very simply, we can just go in and basically undo what I just did. You know, hit S to scale, scale it along the Z-axis, and just kind of adjust it until you get it the way you want. Um, you know, again, I want it to be pretty cozy, 
okay, something like that looks like it'll work. Uh, and again, you know, when, when doing the editing, as you can see, uh, it doesn't change or affect the particle system in real time. You have to tap out of edit mode to refresh the particle system so that you can then see. So t the adjusting can take a little bit more time than if it, you know, uh, refreshed instantly, but it still, it you know, it goes pretty quick. All right. So right there, we have a particle system that is generating a pretty structured and I would say pretty perfect uh you know, little uh, particle system here. The only thing that you may notice, and I, I'm not actually sure why this is yet, um, we have this little, this little empty spot right here. Uh, and we can double check, you know, if we go back into our, tab back into edit mode, we do in fact have 360 vertices, and we do have 360 particles. And random is not checked. Uh, and to be honest, I don't actually know why it's doing that yet. Uh, if you end up with a, uh, an empty one, you know, one thing you can do is um, you could play with the, the seed value over here, maybe. Eh, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't make a difference. I'm not sure. Um, you know, but I had the same problem on my corn that I did earlier. Uh, I just rotated it around so that you didn't see it, basically. Um, the only downside is that this does, in fact, mean that one of these corn kernels is doubled somewhere on our corn cob because we do have 360 corn kernels and since one isn't here it is around somewhere in this little area here but uh, for the sake of this it's probably going to be okay all right uh, and if by the way if anybody knows why it's doing that feel free to leave it in the comments um, so that I will know and everybody else will know so that if it happens again we can fix it okay well we have this set up with a you know very perfect structure but uh, you know like I was saying uh, nature does offer a lot of structure and order, but it's not quite so perfect. You know, there is a lot of variation and sort of, I guess, chaos within um, the structure. So I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can sort of add that in using the particles. Oh, excuse me. Using the particle system, using not the particle system, and then I'm going to show you really quickly how to set up a, uh, a material to add to our corn to even add uh, a color variation within there. So really quickly, let's check this out. Now one thing about this right now is all the corn kernels are exactly the same size. And that is not very realistic. So the first thing we'll do is we'll adjust that. Now over here down in our physics uh, panel on our uh, particle settings, we have our size that we adjusted and then right below we have this random size which if we scale this up you can see pretty much exactly what that does it uh, every time it creates an instance of this particle it uh, gives it a random size value and if the random size is all the way up to one it's giving a random size uh, between zero and this which is always going to be your maximum size uh, we don't want it to be quite that intense uh, you know so we're just going to maybe put it at maybe 0.15 um, you know just something that's it's it's subtle but you can see it you know you notice it the one thing since it is shrinking a lot of our particles I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the the maximum size just a little bit just to keep that real snugness in there even on the smaller um, particles okay and that already is starting to look a little bit you know more corn on the cob like but you know these rows are still perfect you know perfectly shaped, perfectly uh, straight. Um, the corn itself is a, is a perfect uh, deal here. It's just, it's not real uh, genuine looking. It, it still looks kind of fakish. So um, we'll take a look at how we can adjust that doing a few things. One thing about using the um, emit from verts option is that we now know if we, well first off let me I'm going to go over to my modifiers tab, click this little eyeball on our particle system here so we can hide this. If we hit tab to go into edit mode, we know for a fact where all of our particles are growing from. You know, they're growing from these points, which means we can manipulate these points however we want and, uh, you know, however we want to affect the, the particle system and know that it's going to... Um, you know, grow the particles exactly the way we want. So it, it is kind of handy setting it up like this if you want something a little more structured. So for starters, we want to adjust this, uh, the straightness here. It's, it's a little bit much. So to do that, I'm going to, while in edit mode, I'm going to go down here to my select option down here at the bottom, and I'm going to select random. And as you can see, this does exactly what you might think. It selects a 
random selection of uh, vertices within this object. And over here on the left in our little options here, we can have it select more or less, depending on how many we want. Um, 50 is probably fine for this. And uh, with that selected there, I'm also going to hit O to turn on my proportional editing. And over here in the fall off, uh, I'm going to switch this from smooth to random. And now, if, uh, if with keeping these selected, if I hit R and then Z and scroll up my area of influence here, I can rotate these around the Z axis a little bit and basically just kind of screw up the perfection of these rows, which is really all I want to do. Just kind of, you know, it doesn't need to be a lot, just something subtle. And, uh, and like I said, we know for a fact that all of our particles are growing out of here. So by, just by changing and randomizing those, if I tab out of edit mode and turn our particle system back on, look at that. Now that looks a lot more, you know, it's a, the structure and the form is still there, but it's jittered. It's, you know, it looks more authentic. And we can do the same thing, um, you know, to just adjust the, uh, the overall... Um, shape of this thing. Uh, I'm going to switch my fall off of my proportional editing back to smooth for this one. Let's say we, we shrunk this one down a little bit. Let's uh, select this one by alt clicking this edge loop and scaling it up a little bit. Just get, make it a little chunkier looking. Okay, you know, that's looking pretty good. You know, we got some of our gaps back in here. And you notice that one thing is that down here, it's they're a little bit, you know, the gaps are more obvious, and up here, it's a lot more. Um, smushed, I guess is a way to put it. And uh, one quick way that we can adjust that is since basically um, if you look, these rows look like they're a little bit closer together than these rows going this way. Uh, if we grab these up here with our proportional editing still on, hit G and then Z and then just kind of scale this proportion a little bit more, we can I guess uh, straighten these out let me turn it way down and move this one up like this. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. And again, you know, it takes a little bit of, of being finicky and and uh, um, you know, just just making making the adjustments until you until you get it kind of the way you like it. Uh, you know, something like that. You know, that'll that'll be fine for right now. Um, we do have a lot more gaps in here, so I'm just going to go back to our size and bump it up just a little bit more, just to really smush those things together. Okay, so that right there is that's pretty good looking corn on the cob. You know, uh, it's got a lot of the structure and the order while still maintaining sort of that chaos and random variation that comes in nature. Uh, but let's really quickly, just for the sake of the tutorial. Uh, take this one step further and actually set up a material on this that will um, give a random uh, color variation to each kernel. And this is actually very simple to do in Cycles. It's probably very simple to do in Blender Internal, but I don't know how to do it in Blender Internal, so I'm going to show you how to do it in Cycles. Uh, with that being said, let's make sure that our render engine up here is set to Cycles, if it isn't already. And uh, since we're using a uh, an object as our particle rather than, you know, than uh, the hair or whatever. We need to set the material up on our actual particle, not on the particle system. So uh, what I mean by that is we need to go back to our original corn kernel that we made and apply the material to this object because it's using this object's information to, you know, add all of these objects in. So we'll go back to this one. We'll select it, go to our materials tab, hit new. And to start off, we'll just give it a, uh, a mix shader with um, a diffuse, if I can find it. I know it's alphabetical. Uh, and a glossy. And uh, we'll set the glossy to about a 0.1, make it a little shiny. Uh, the factor, also a 0.1, um, because we want it to be mostly the diffuse. And then, you know, so that right now it's 90% diffuse, 10% glossy. And we'll set the diffuse to just sort of a yellow. Um, just so we can kind of see. Now, if I were to set this to a rendered mode, you can see, uh, I mean, even even with this, it, it's not too bad. Maybe a little more orangish. You know, I mean, that's that's actually not too bad. You know, you, you could easily get away with this as your uh, material. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's convincing enough. But, you know, since, since we're already... Uh, we're looking at some sort of random variation uh, stuff in here. Let's let's take it that one step further. 
So I'm going to drag up this little corner here and split my view. I'm going to set this view to be a node editor. And uh, as you can see down here, I have my uh, my material nodes that are uh, representing w basically what we created over here. So we've got our diffuse and our glossy being mixed together at a factor of 0.1 and then going to our final material output node. So uh, we're going to add two more nodes and uh, the ones we're going to add, if I hit shift A down in the node editor here, uh, I'm going to go to search and down in search I always have this color ramp node if it's not there you can just start typing well, I mean you should probably spell it correctly but uh, color ramp and the reason I find that in the search option is because I don't know where to find it um, if anybody can tell me where to find it, I assumed it would be in color uh, as you can see it's not so I have no idea where to find the color ramp node so I just always search for it because it's you know it's easy enough anyway uh, what this does is it allows us to set up a, a color ramp, as you may have guessed, which right now, um, by default, is just you know going from black to white. So let's change this. We'll select this black one over on the left, click our color uh, box here, and we'll change this to sort of that rich corn yellow. Uh, we'll click over here on this right side. We'll change this one to sort of like, I don't know, a pale yellow, something like that. And if we drag this color option over to our color here, and let's say we render this guy out again, you might notice, well, it doesn't look like anything changed. I mean, it's it's maybe a little bit paler than it was. And that's because of this factor value right here. What it's doing at the moment is uh, it's using this color ramp, and it's sending the information based on this factor, which right now is 0.5. So it's sending the color that's right here in the middle. Well, you can see if we move the factor around, it goes to this really intense one all the way at the one side, and it goes to the very light color all the way at the other side. Well, it's not, you know, it's not that random. It's still just all one color for each kernel. So we need to add one more node in. So we'll go down here, we'll hit Shift A, and we'll go to the input section, and we will input object info. And object info has this handy little point here called random and we can drag this to the factor and now what this is going to do is anytime an object is in the scene that uses this material it's going to randomly pick a point along this uh, color ramp and send that to our color information for our diffuse so if we were to render this out right now now you can see we have a lot of color variation in all of our kernels and you know it might be a little bit much you know you can go and adjust maybe make this a little bit more yellowy less orange you know, something like that. But, uh, I mean, that looks pretty good. If you look at an actual corn on the cob, there is subtle variations within the corn itself. Um, and if you really wanted to get fun, you could, you know, take this color, set it to like, you know, like a dark orange brown and get one of those cool corn you see, you know, during Thanksgiving all the time. Uh, I don't actually know what they call it, but, uh, you know, we all know what we're looking at here, um, you know. So it just it and it allows you to do that very simply, rather than having to go in and either assign materials to each individual one or create, you know, maybe four or six different kernels, um, each with a, a different material color, and then using them as a group rather than an object on a particle system, you know. Because uh, for one, this allows you to change it completely on the fly. You know, if if you had to do it the other way, you would end up um, uh, having to go through and um, adjusting each one if you wanted to make any changes. So anyway, there we go. That is a very quick little uh, fancy material shader for, you know, that's really handy for these particle systems if you need a lot of random color. Um, this is really handy for like, uh, sorry, that, that made a lot of noise there. I just bumped my mic. Um, for doing like a grass or tree leaves where you want them to all be basically the same color but adding a subtle variation to each blade of grass or leaf just really ha helps to add a lot of authenticity and a lot of realism where it might not otherwise have been there. Okay, so with this being said, this looks pretty much finished. But what about if you want to create a particle system like this, but you don't want a particle on every single vertice? You know, like obviously here, our corn cob is it's using every vert that it has and uh, applying a particle to it. But what if that's not what you want? Well. To look into that, let's check out this uh, this cactus. I'm going to collapse this view down here, and I'm going to go to a new layer. And uh, let's take a look at using these same techniques, but uh, maybe 
you know, not putting a particle on every vertice and being a little bit more specific about where we want the particles to go. So again, like with the last one, we're going to need a particle and an emitter. So we'll start out, we'll go to uh, just an empty layer. We'll hit Shift A and I'm going to bring in a cone and I'm going to set the vertices down to three because we just, you know, very simple little triangle cone is all we really want. And uh, I'm going to adjust this radius so that it's nice and thin because, you know, we're making, you know, needles. So they don't need to be real thick. Uh, they also don't need a lot of geometry, you know, since, uh, okay, that looks fine. All right. And, you know, before we get too far, once again, let's get this guy oriented correctly. I'm going to go into, uh, hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to rotate it around 90 degrees and it moved that origin point right to the root of that object just like that. So now if I go into top view mode I'm looking at the front of it, the bottom of the object is towards the bottom of the screen, the top is towards the top of the screen. Okay, now let's go to another new layer and let's start making this cactus object. Now really quickly, you know, this isn't really about how to model a cactus, but I'll show you kind of a, the way I, I did mine. I'm going to add in a UV sphere, we'll leave it with 32 vertices and uh, I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode hit Z to toggle wireframe and A to deselect everything and I'm gonna delete I'm gonna delete these bottom vertices down here just cuz you know we're not gonna really need them uh, I'm also gonna select everything hit S and then Z to scale it along the uh, the Z axis just to get a little bit more of a elongated shape okay now we want sort of to make sort of like ridges and to do that I'm going to basically let's see how many let's see I'm going to select every two, I guess. I'm going to, so I'm going to select one, skip two, and then select one again. And uh, I'm just alt clicking on the edge loop. So I'm just going to do this, go all the way around the object. And um, okay, I ended up not quite how I wanted, but I could put that side on the back if I want. Okay, so with these selected, I'm going to leave my proportional editing turned on. And I'm going to hit Alt S. And this is, if I turn the influence down, you can see it's going to allow me to either pull those out or shrink them in. Um, for the sake of this, we're going to pull them out uh, just a little bit. Something like, we don't need a lot, but something like this will work. Okay. Uh, let's add a smooth shader on that. And let's add a subdivision surface modifier as well. Okay. That'll work for this. And I'm just going to with the object selected, hit G and the Z, just pull it up out of that grid floor. Kind of looks like a ghost almost, doesn't it? Anyway, all right, so that, uh, that'll that work. Now, if we were to use the same method of, you know, if we go to our particle settings here, create a new particle system, change it from emitter to hair, click on advanced, emit from verts, uncheck random. I mean, you know, this we're getting pretty much the same result that we had, but we don't want all of these needles. We want the needles to be in very specific places. Well, the way that we're going to do that is uh, by using this option all the way down here of the vertex groups, which you can assign a vertex group to uh, control various options of the particle system. Now, what is a vertex group you're saying? I will show you. If we uh, select our object here, which I'm going to, again, go back to our modifier stack hide our particle system modifier just so it's not constantly in the way but if we click on our object uh, I think it's object data tab yeah uh, over here we have this uh, this vertex groups tab so well, first off we'll just go ahead click that plus to add in a new vertex group we'll just name this needles or you know you can name it pancakes if you want it doesn't really matter um, just as long as you know what it is uh, okay so the way the vertex group works is we can, if we go into edit mode, we can assign certain vertices to these vertex groups um, and then use that information to basically tell the particle system um, where to affect certain settings. Uh, for example, if we only want, like let's say, um, I'm going to hit control C here, let's say we only want needles to show up on these ridges that we made. Uh, we don't want them anywhere inside these little canyon gaps here. We just want them in these ridges. Well, what we can do is uh, we can select all of those ridges and over here we'll make sure our needles vertex group is highlighted and we can hit assign and we want to leave the weight up to one because this is going to be um, 
basically how strong this vertex group affects that vertices. So if we had this way down here, we could assign them to the vertex group, but it would only be affecting it a little bit, um, which we don't want. We want it to be affecting, at least for this instance, all the way at 100%. So with those uh, selected, we can hit Assign. And now if we deselect everything, and with this needle still selected, we hit Select, it shows us what's in that vertex group, which are the ones we just added, and that's what we want. Okay, so we can hit Tab to leave Edit Mode, go back to our Particle Settings, and, oh, I guess we should turn it back on visually so we can see what we're doing here. And for starters, let's, let's uh, tell it to use that needle object that we created. So we'll go back down here to the Render tab, click on Object, uh, get our drop-down menu here, and we want to add that cone object. And there we go, there we have the needles. Okay, but again, we still have needles coming out everywhere. Well, we can very, very easily now adjust this by going down here to our Vertex Group option, and under Density, we'll hit this drop-down menu which shows all the available vertex groups on the object, which we only have the one, called needles, or pancakes if you're that guy. And now you can see that we now only have the needles growing out of those vertexes or vertices that we added to the vertex group. So this gives us a lot of really good options for being very intentional about where we're putting the um, the object, or the uh, particles. Now we can go much further on this and add a lot of variation much like we did here. I'm going to show you a couple of other techniques since uh, you know again not all these needles are going to be the same size. We can very easily again adjust the size here, get them as you know big as you want and adjust the random size something you know I'm going to turn this up a good amount. Now uh, we still have a lot of uh, a lot more growing out of here than what we want. Um, but we are going to want multiple needles growing out of each point, but it's hard to see them. Well, if we go back up here to our rotation tab on our uh, particle settings, turn that on, we can then adjust some of these random settings. Actually, I think first off, let's switch this velocity hair to normal. There we go. Okay, I'm going to turn these back down again. Okay, so with this set to normal, we can adjust this randomness, and you can see right there, it sort of, it's basically randomly assigning a rotation to each object, which in this case means we get this cool little fan out effect, fanning out from that little central point. And that's about what we want. You know, we could adjust this rotation here, but uh, in this particular instance, it's not really going to matter because it's, um, anyway, yeah. So uh, right there, we've got a pretty decent looking little deal. The only thing is these needles look a little bit thin. We could go into the size and adjust the size, but you know, it's gonna, I don't want the needles to be real long, I just want them to be a little thicker. So instead, we'll go back to our needle object that we created. Hit tab to go into edit mode, Z to toggle wireframe, we'll select these, and we'll just scale them up a little bit, just so it's a little chunkier. Okay, now if we go back, we can see the needles are a little bit, a little bit more intense. And you could spend more time making a, a nicer looking needle. Obviously these are just, you know, little triangular spikes that are popping out. Um, but that right there, I mean, that's, that's not a too bad level, uh, too bad of a cactus. You know, we could really quickly create a circle, uh, hit tab to go into edit mode, you know, E to extrude, Z to lock along the Z axis, scale this out, E to extrude and just scale it up. E to extrude Z to lock it along the Z axis, you know, E to extrude and then scale it down, and then extrude it down along the Z axis one more time. You know, um, just to give it something that looks a little little more interesting. Okay, hit control 2 to add a subsurf modifier to that. We'll add a couple edge loops with control R, just to give our, you know, j just to make it a little more fun. Okay, something like that, and that looks fine. And, uh, you know, we need some dirt there, so uh, we'll hit, uh, oops, not tab, we'll hit shift A, we'll add in a uh, another circle, scale it up so it fits inside the top of this thing, move it up here, and then for this we'll just, uh, we'll, ex oops, we'll extrude, and then scale, scale, this way down. We don't actually need to merge these in the center because you won't see them. And then we'll just add a whole bunch of edge loops in here, which we can now go into our modifiers tab, add in a displacement modifier. On our texture we'll hit new, 
and we'll turn the strength down just to add a little bit of lumpiness to that at a smooth shader. Okay, so right there we got ourselves a nice little cactus. Just because I'm picky. Okay, so right there we have a nice little cactus. So you can see, whoops, I guess we can go one at a time here, that very easily we have set up, you know, a uh, a nice structured particle system with a lot of very random variation, uh, you know, still alluding to structure, but with a lot of chaos intermittent, and, you know, even including a random... Color, uh, colorization of the particles themselves, and uh, you know we've also got a uh, a nice little cactus here, which we didn't really go through a material because um, you know you, I, I imagine you could probably assign a green material to the cactus, an orange material to the the pot here. Um, you know this is more about just creating the particle system, but uh, you know using very similar techniques, we've created um, a much more I guess intentional. Um, particle system that still has a, a lot of randomness within it as far as the random size, the random rotation of the, the needles, but is is much more structured and much more uniform uh, looking. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to call this tutorial finished. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I just set up a really quick, uh, really quick scene to render this out and kind of show our results. Um, but yeah, we got some some nice some nice looking results with this tutorial. Uh, but the cool thing about this is using this particular method with the particle system, uh, it allows you to create a lot of different things. You know, this is this is not specifically only for creating corn on the cob and cactus. You know, you could use this uh, this same process to use a particle system to generate a brick wall, for instance, or uh, if you were making a farm scene to you know, grow cabbages out of the ground in the rows that they would, uh, you know, normally be in. I assume. I'm not a farmer. Uh, so, uh, I don't even play Farmville. Is that how cabbages grow? Not important. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so with this, you know, there are a lot of options and a lot of possibilities with this process. So, uh, again, this is Josh Mall, and thank you for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something new. I can't wait to see what you do with it, and uh, I would encourage you to, uh, to definitely take these techniques and maybe push the boundaries of, uh, of what you can do with them. You know, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, you guys are, will be able to come up with something much, much